Okay, we are page 24 of the book. And this is what is starting with a question. Number six. Has the generation living just before the second coming of Christ been specially chosen to prepare the world for that event? The event is the second coming, of course. But I would interject that it's a little more than the second coming. There's other churches preaching the second coming. Are there many churches preaching about the judgment? Only one, and that one is the Seventh-day Adventist church or group. Why? They don't preach about the judgment. They don't, understand. they don't understand. They don't have a clue. And a lot of evangelical churches state that when Jesus went to heaven, he had completed all the ministry of redemption. It is true in a sense. But question, what did he go to do in heaven? Sit by, by God and just, you know, do nothing? Is that the case? That's not what the Bible says. He went to the throne of God. And what is he doing there? Ministering our advocate. And that comes from the understanding of the sanctuary and the desert. Yes, the sanctuary message. And so, do you think that God wanted us to tell the world, share with the world that understanding? But you know what? It's an understanding that brings reproach because people say, no, 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 that's not in the Bible. But it is in the Bible. The whole Bible is filled with imagery from the sanctuary, especially Revelation, as you're going to see it. So read, let's read together. If somebody wants to read that first part, the, in black, that first part or this part here is what the author is saying. But she is not off, so we'll read it. Somebody. As God looked down through the centuries, he saw final generations coming onto the stage of the earth's history. God knew when we would be born, and he had already planned a very unique assignment for you and me. A work for which he has created us. He has given us talents, abilities, and has dedicated to him will enable us to reach his highest ideal. Our destiny is determined by our willingness to connect with the divine purpose and allowing him to empower us to fulfill that calling. As we thus cooperate with God, we will experience heights of joy, fulfillment unknown to most of mankind. Thank you. What a nice sight with glasses, but you have a good eyesight, because some... Well, it's better with glasses. <laughs> what, what is she saying here? It's all related to what Sandy was sharing with us this morning. I mean, did God have plans for Jacob? He sure did. He told his mom, that's what's going to happen. But we can mar... God's or, or detour God's plans. You talked about he went to plan B. Many times I found in my life God has to go to plan B, C, D because of my wrongdoings. He would like to do it plan A, but it doesn't work because I didn't let him work. But he does work his plan. By the way, this 6,000 years of sin... Don't you think that God had a plan for Adam and Eve better than what Adam and Eve did? Yeah. Absolutely. Did he want sin to come in the world? No way. Would it have been different? Of course. But that's, that's our God. Our amazing and awesome and wonderful God. That he can and he'll do his willing at the end. It's going to be according to what he wanted. Even if it took a little detour. 6,000 years detour. It's, yeah, that's what I think. Ugh. We could have been so, I mean, Adventists could have been in heaven since 1888 or 1890 or 1895. Jesus would have come, but he did not come because of what? 
unbelief, unsubordination, rebellion, and all those things that they're not even nice to, to say because they seem so bad. Oh, those people. Are we better than them? They're plain children. Okay. Um, if I don't touch this, it goes... Um, let's read this because I want to go to second selected messages, but, um, we have there the, the two, um, texts, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, what you were talking, Ron, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Are we Adventists by chance? No. We could be some other group, right? But we are today knowing this message. You were a Mormon before, I think, right? And before that, what were you when you were a little girl? Uh, Bible thumping Baptist with my grandma. Okay. And you, Ron, nothing? And, Ra and Warren, what were you when you were young or, or a boy? At 12, uh, I accepted Jesus into my heart uh, at the Church of the Nazarene. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we have done something wrong. We have said, oh, they are like all those other churches are lost. You know what? In those churches, there's more element for saving souls than we understand because it says that the majority of the true and faithful are still in Babylon. Who has to call them out? We will read this. Who has to invite them to come out of the confusion that they're in? Some are Adventists, way confused. Do you believe that? They're way confused because they're not, according to what God is, Showing us. Somebody, Deuteronomy 7 6, who wants to read this, that, that verse there? For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. Because we're better than others? Because we have a little halo? Why? Why does God want to have a people to show others what we just read in 1 Peter 2.9? From the darkness to his marvelous light. Why? God chose at the beginning um, the ones that we are studying. All the patriarchs and their wives. Don't, don't think that God chose only men. When they say the patriarchs. Well, where are the women? Right there. Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel. It's, it's both, okay? But why did God chose Israel, for instance? Because they were some special dudes and ladies? What, what, why? If you are willing. Yeah. Everyone, but, everyone had a choice. Yes, even those Canaanites, didn't they? Say, you're going to be my special people whether you like it or not. No, <laughs> exactly. It's always... The desire of the Lord. And he chose Israel. It says. Not because you're a big or special nation. You were the least of all the others. So who are Adventists? The most blessed people in the world. But they're the least. Many. I, I'm looking at others. And they're learned people. They don't understand the Sabbath. But they know their Bibles. And they know God. And they know and love God. Yes. Let's read this. Second messages. It says, I'm instructed to say to Seventh-day Adventists, the world over, God has called us as people to be a peculiar treasure. Do you understand the word peculiar? Special, different. Unto himself. 
He has appointed that his church on earth shall stand perfectly united in the spirit and counsel of the Lord of hosts to the end of times. And there is others that we'll be reading here. Let me... That this is what she is saying. Somebody wants to read that, please. The Seventh-day Adventists have been destined, destined by God to proclaim a message to the world that will usher in the kingdom of glory and bring an end to the reign of sin and suffering. Amen. We have been given a message and a mission that will enable everyone who is willing to cooperate with God to have the opportunity of being saved and have the honor of being translated without seeing death. This is the incomprehensive privilege. Okay. Some will not see death. Some will see death. I don't know if I'm going to be alive or dead. But what I want to do, and I think that you want to do, is to be in the will of God and reflect His character, no matter if I die or I stay alive. But the ones that are alive are going to be a special group. Not because they're better than others. It's because of their experience with the Lord and the experience of the world around them. We'll, we'll read this. It's a privilege to be right now alive in these end times. Question. In order to be faithful to, call, to the call of God, what is the divine mandate that we must share with the world? Here we go. We are called a special group of people because we have a understanding or we should have an understanding i mean i have asked this to different people do you understand what the three angels message is and they look at me like yes it's three angels messages three angels angels that go through the high of the uh, you know the it's a message of three angels but that's it is that the message I mean, we can read it. We don't need to. Well, I go to Revelation 14 and then I read the three angels message. But there is a reason why God has this message in this end time. Marty was talking uh, about two or three weeks ago, this um, brother that I was telling you, and something, someone in the family has died. And they said, okay, they died. And they were talking with his wife not knowing exactly where that person is. That's interesting. Because they don't, they, they don't know. It's not clear for them where that person is. And I'm thinking, Lord, help us to help others know what your word says. Yeah. But some people don't believe that because they say, that's like a mean God that would put them in the grave. They, they, you know, when they die, my mom was a good lady. She has, you know, she's in heaven. Well, it's almost in heaven. You have to say that. I mean. It's heaven for the person. Yes. But for the one that is a dead, where is that person? Sleeping. Uh-huh. Sleeping in the grave. Uh-huh. Sleeping, sleeping? For us is death. They are not breathing. They're not breathing. They are done for a time being, right? But for God, He sees them as sleeping because He can wake them up. That's not, not a problem for Him. For us, it is a problem. When somebody dies, unless God resurrects them right there, or maybe a few hours or days after, they're dead. And we cannot bring them back. But Satan works with that so well, because from the beginning, he said to Eve, you shall not die. And God said, you will die. And so it's God or is it Satan? We've been believing Satan as a humanity more than God. And that's a problem. And God says, in the end time, you better understand the state of the dead, because it's going to be a challenge. You see, there's going to be people coming from supposedly heaven saying that they're the apostles that they are the loved ones that have died and that they are coming to help us because we are in such a mess. And they're saying truth with error. We are in a mess as humanity. But are they going to help us? But see, how are we going to know that they are not dead that are coming from heaven? By the scriptures. And if we don't understand this issue about the state of the dead, we're going to be taken. But let's, let's read this. The proclamation of the three angels' message is to be our work. 
Okay, how? What do we have to understand? It is a special sense, Seventh-day Adventists, you and me, have been set in the world as watchmen and light bearers. To them has been, to us, entrusted the last warning for a perishing world in 2022. On them, on us, is shining wonderful light from the Word of God. They have been given a work of the most solemn import. The proclamation of the first, second, and third angel's messages. There is no other work so great of importance. They are to allow, and this got my attention when I was going through this again. They are to allow how many things? Nothing else to absorb their attention. Is that conclusive? Is that absolute? They are not, and they, who are they? Us. We are not to allow nothing else to absorb our attention. The most solemn truths ever entrusted to mortals have been given to us to proclaim to the world. The proclamation of these truths is to be our work. The world is to be warned, and God, God's people are to be true to the trusted, committed to them. Now, what is this message? When you go into the message, it's all the gospel and a final appeal or a final call from God. That's what it is. Because you start going on the first and second, third message. We won't go right now on that part, but we will go in detail in the near future. Seventh-day Adventists have been chosen by God as a peculiar people separate from the world. By the great clever of truth, you understand clever? Cleaver. Something, or cleaver. cleaver. Cleaver, thank you. Uh, yes, cleaver of truth. He has cut them out from the quarry of the world and brought them into connection with himself. Because we're better than others? No, because he loved us. He loves the others. That's why he calls them, come out of Babylon, my people. Out of confusion. He has made them his representatives and has called them to be ambassadors for him in the last work of salvation. The greatest wealth of truth ever entrusted to mortals. The most solemn and fearful warnings ever sent by God to men have been committed to them to be given to the world. Do you see 90 and 70? This is Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9 and Volume 7. I think... Volume 5, 7, and well, all those testimonies are really, really interesting because it's, it's a call for the church, and we are God's church. Why is it imperative that we individually connect with our unique denominational identity? Here we go with something that is very, very important. Could we be some other church? With another name, because some people say, well, you know, Seventh-day Adventist, it's a name that is in contempt. Because who gave the Seventh-day Adventist, Adventist name to the pioneers? Do you know this story? The Lord did. Okay, question. Could we be another church? Why not? I, I, I'm, I'm asking this in purpose. Why not? You said something about the Nazarene. You said something about no church. You said something about the Church of Christ, or what was it? Baptist. Baptist. And you, Methodist. Mm -hmm. Why couldn't we be one of them? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, they don't have the full message, right? They have... Why? Do you know this story? Why? Why are we called out of the quarry of the world to be close to the Lord? He's giving us the message, but the message is for a reason. Do you see that the Protestant churches came getting light? They came, they came, they came, they came. Once they reach a time, they stopped by going deeper in the Bible. And the Lord raised up a new group called the Seventh-day Adventists, but they were not new per se. They were 
Baptists, they were Methodists, a conglomerate. And he is calling this group from the 1800s to keep on developing the light of truth and taking it to the world. And you said something about the Sabbath, about the state of the dead, about the ministration of Jesus in the Holy Sanctuary in heaven. Those things are things that they did not, I won't say receive, accept it. Maybe they were not ready to, but they were, in the other hand, because in the days of Luther, he was giving the message of the Sabbath and he rejected it. But somebody that was his friend that knew him had the message of the Sabbath and he accepted it. So, but not because people reject lights the first time, God condemns them. Because that's the case of William Miller. He did not accept the Sabbath message. And he did not accept this message of Jesus being in the heavenly sanctuary ministering for us because he didn't have the full understanding, but he was almost going to accept it. And then his friends said, no, that's not what we have to do. Forget it. And his friends are being put in the responsible part that they did not let him accept it. But um, do you see what happened? They came, 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 and they stopped here. And who kept on going with the message? The Adventists. Because God wanted the Protestants to take it to the... I mean, if they would have done that, I don't know if God would have raised the Adventists. It would have been these people. But they stopped. Question. Now the Adventists are doing the message. If somebody doesn't believe completely the Adventist message and they go to the world again, are they going to be saved or lost? If they knew better and they go back, what does Hebrew says? That's not something that God wants, right? There are people that I know that have come to a place where they say, Adventism doesn't have the right teachings of the Bible. I'll go to Baptist or I'll go to Catholicism and they go back to Babylon. Do you think that they are in a right understanding of what the truth, the full truth is? No way. They get it. How do you say when somebody gets... Uh... Now, let's keep on going. Uh, I'm going to jump some of this. I'm going to go here. It is impossible to give an idea of the experience of the people of God who shall be alive upon the earth when celestial glory and the repetition of the persecutions of the past are blended. They will walk in the light proceeding from the throne of God by means of the angels. There will be constant communication between heaven and earth. Is that going to happen? Do you believe that? I mean, can we speak with angels? Did Abraham speak with angels? Yes. Did Jacob speak with angels? Did, did those people have a better understanding or spiritual walk with the Lord than us? Maybe so, but God says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'll be going on this one, and we'll be just calling it an end Perhaps one of the reasons why many today are unable to present a clear message to the world is because we don't know why we are Seventh-day Adventists. We see little difference between ourselves and our Christian neighbors. SDAs have a unique denominational identity. We are raised, we were raised up to gather all the truths which Protestantism brought to light and then continue walking in all the advancing light which Jesus is continually sending from the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Warren, Warren. That's okay. Uh, Christian got the idea. Um, of the heavenly sanctuary where he officiates as our high priest today. Since we are called to live in a time of unparalleled spiritual darkness, it becomes a matter of spiritual life or death to walk in all the light proceeding from the throne of God and not miss any communication he is sending us. Do you understand then? Protestantism came to a halt and God raised in the 1800s. How do you call it, uh, Sandy? Um, mosaic of... 
No, 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 no. A little piece of each one. Conglomeration. Conglomeration. Mosaic. Mosaic. Yes. This is a beautiful promise which we find in Isaiah 54, 17. Who wants to read that? No weapon. So when people are against us, stating things or in a court, um, we have to remember God will give us what to say. We have to study today and try to memorize the most that we can. But if we can't memorize because we are so young, then we have to study it out. God will help us in the right time. That's a promise. Trust in the Lord. Let not the feelings, the speeches, or the attitude of any human agent depress you. Be careful that in words or in act, you do not give others any opportunity to obtain advantage in hurting you. And that's sort of where you were going with the story this morning. Not only hurting us, but us hurting others with what we're saying, right? Keep looking unto Jesus. He is our strength. By beholding Jesus, you will become changed into his likeness. He will be the health of your countenance and your God. And um, we'll leave it right here. This are, I mean, we can go and we can do it in three times. But if we do that, we're not going to get the, the meat of it. I wanted to read some of these beautiful promises with you. Um, yeah, but um, maybe not today. But, you know, sometimes it's better to go slower. We'll leave it at number nine. How are we to face obstacle and opposition to the enemy as we move forward in our calling? This is what we're going to go because here, um, I'll just go back. There are, they are to allow nothing to absorb their attention. The most solemn truths ever entrusted to mortals have been given to us to proclaim to the world. And those truths are what God wants the world to understand and make decisions. Because when the Sunday law comes, they're going to have to make decisions. Everyone has going to make a decision. Do I go by what the government says? Right now, it was a run-up with the, with the jab. You have to have it or else. Well, it's not going to be a jab in the future. It's going to be, we have to keep Sunday holy, you have to go to church on Sunday, and you have to work on all other days, and there's going to be snitchers, that's how you say when sn somebody... Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Saying, these people are not doing what the government is asking. So, we are going to be placed in very hard and difficult situations if we are faithful to the Lord. If we're not faithful... You know what happens. Oh, okay, you're going to be able to have the card. You're going to be able to eat. You're going to be able to do this and that. But if not, you're going to lose all those privileges. Question. What happened when Rebecca and Jacob wanted to help God? They, 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 they did the wrong thing. Well, we will be put in places where we're going to have to wait upon the Lord and be faithful to the Lord or... We're going to be tempted to help God by saying, hey, man, give me the card. I need to eat. Give me the number, whatever. We are going to be put in those places. And the Lord says, prepare now. Because the message to the world is be faithful, loyal to God, no matter what. And the majority are not going to do that. They're going to be faithful to eating. Because are you hearing what they're saying? There's shortage of food. They're making the shortage of food. They're destroying food. They're doing all these things to say there is a problem. We have to have a day off. It's Sunday, the day to let the earth rest. And they're going to make all these things. And we're going to be in the middle. And the Lord has said, prepare, because you're going to be put in a position where you're going to have to decide the Lord or the world, the Lord or the government, the Lord or whatever. 
May the Lord help us to make the decision for him. And it starts now. With every decision that we're making, it starts now. And the Lord wants to help us. He wants to give us strength, spiritual strength. And he is by us. He has promised that if we trust in him, he's going to help us. He's going to take us through. We don't have nothing to fear. Even if there is a Red Sea and we don't know how to approach it. But the Lord says, go forward. That's how we have to approach it. If the Lord says, walk in the water. Okay, I walk in the water. And what is he going to do? Why do you think those lessons are in there, in the Bible? Just, oh, nice story. No. It's for us. We are going to go through similar things, and we need to remember. If the Lord did it then, he's going to do it now. He's going to do it tomorrow. And that is a beautiful security or, or, or assurance that, we have somebody that is in our side that knows how to take us from this world to the next world, from death to life. Amen. 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 Let's, let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to, in peace, still be able to open your word and the spirit of prophecy and understand where and how you want us to live in these moments of earth's history. It says that nothing has to take our thoughts or, or deviate us from the message that you have given us as a people. Help us to first understand the message and second to live it to the fullest of our understandings and to share the joy that means to be your sons and daughters. We have other brothers and sisters in other churches. I mean, all of us basically have come, or the most of us have come to, from other denominations. And Father, we haven't been called to be an Adventist because we have some type of extra points or... No, no, no. We have been called to give a message of hope. We have been called to show what you are willing to do with people and sons and daughters willing to be led by your will and by your hand. And that's, that's a reason why you have a church to complete the message or the doctrines that you have developed throughout these 6,000 years for us to understand they are your principles. You want to have a people that will show that we can be overcomers, that we can go or live and not sin. And all those things are things that Satan has said, it's impossible. There is no people that can live without sinning. Father, you have promised us that you will have a group like that. We want to be part of that group. And if we don't make it alive, we want to die being faithful. Help us, Father, both ways. It doesn't matter. Whatever you choose, help us to be in the sight of the Lamb. In Jesus' beautiful name, I ask this. Amen.